Hi everyone, I'm here today to talk with you about what a breakthrough looks like. Some of you want to have one and we'll talk about that. My name is Bess McCarty. I am founder and coach of the MLM Millionaire Club School for Network Marketers, also a coach for private people for business and life. So I shared with you already uh, at a, in previous Facebook Lives about my shyness as a child. When I was young, I was so, child, so shy I would hide when company come over, and I had to get over that. Hello, Debbie. Welcome. <laughs> I had to overcome that in order to do what I felt is my life's mission, which is to teach and to coach and to help other people. So I had to overcome that to become a network marketer and speak and teach and speak from stage and go door to door and um, all these things. Debbie is from Kansas like I am. She says, hi from Olathe. <laughs> welcome. And I'm in Hayes and we're not too far apart. So welcome, Debbie. Thank you for being here. And for those who are watching the replay, I'd love if you type replay in so I could thank you for it. For those who share it with other people, I'd love if you type that in too so that I can thank you for sharing. Maybe someone else can use this information of how to get past their own blocks like I'll describe to you. I'm going to tell you some stories today. Hello, Pilar. Welcome. Hello. Nice to meet you. Hello, Lucy. Welcome. <laughs> so, um, I, when I overcame that shyness, I ended up teaching in a lot of different venues. I, I was a homeschool teacher, an art teacher, a body-mind therapy teacher for 15 years at Body Mind College in San Diego. I was a head instructor there. And I taught in my spiritual group for 40 years, still am, and of course became a teacher of all this work. Hello, Cash. I have a message for you afterward. <laughs> um, Cash Matthews wrote a book called Money University and uh, would like to feature this next Facebook Live. And we'll see if we can possibly get him as a guest speaker. Um, Snow, no, no snow here, Pilar. How about for you? Welcome, Kelly. Welcome. Glad to see everybody. So, I did become a teacher, speaker, trainer, and all of this. Still, there was still something in me that was still afraid of what people thought of me. I still held a lot inside. I restricted really what I said and did to what I thought other people would approve of. And so, as a result, my joy, my energy, my spontaneity was put inside of this can. That's the best description I could think to say for it. So, um, welcome Kelly and Dora and Robin and Jeff. Hi, Jeff. <laughs> Talking about breakthroughs today, what a breakthrough looks like. And I want to describe to you the story that, that I went through, part of my breakthroughs a, a number of years ago. So who I was, my joy, my energy, my spontaneity was kept careful on guard, you know, and, and the guard was what, other, what I thought other people would approve of. And so who I was uniquely, who was me, the unique gift that me and each of us bring to the world was held back. It was hidden. It was a gift that was selfishly kept away from the world because of my fear. And who can relate to that? Can anybody here relate to being shy, um, holding back who you are? And when we do that, the world does not get the unique gift that only you can bring, only each of us can bring. There's something really special and precious about each of us that gets held back when we don't allow the world, allow, we are not rude, we don't allow ourselves to be ourselves or allow ourselves to reach out to the world. And this happens when. <clears throat> Oh, we get fears and certain programming from childhood usually. And it shows up as um, we might um, be afraid to speak to people. We might be afraid as network marketers to make our calls or to be the leader that we really are meant to be inside. We hold, we hold a lot of that back. Well, will I be okay? Will I be approved of? So, um, and um, welcome, Linda. Glad to see you. So, back to my story. Here I was with this pressure building inside and it, it's almost like having being pregnant with a baby that wants to be born and the laws of growth say it's got to come out, 
right? The laws of growth and nature and life say that who we are and our gifts are meant to be give to the, given to the world. And we're really best when we have are in relationships, when we are serving, when we are helping life, we're, we're giving to life. But what if our our fears hold that back? It can be torture. It can be like wanting to give birth because the baby's ready to come out, needs to come out, needs room and everything, and you're going to break anyway. You're going to burst and explode if you don't give birth to that baby. But you're scared, and you're holding, holding the baby back and holding the birth process back because you're scared of it. That can be torture. That's a, that's a huge conflict, and that, that can be that can be very much painful. And it, it can just be um, a huge a huge torture inside. So that is similar. Hello, Gustavo and Lynn, welcome. That's similar to when um, a man came to my office one time, my therapy office, and said, "I've been wanting to come for for years, but I've been scared." but now my pain is greater than my fear, so I'm here. And that's what happened to me with this process. The pain of holding back and the torture and the conflict of that, holding that back what wanted to come out was, was intolerable anymore. So I went to this um, big old therapy process <laughs> that kept us in a room for five days. And we went through all sorts of intense personal growth and breaking open processes and everything. And I was scared of that, of course. Scared to be myself, scared to let, let these things out, scared to face my fears and the dark side of me and to love that. Would I be lovable? You know, those parts of me, are they lovable? The dark side, the shadow side, and all that. So, I had a decision to make during that five days. I could avoid facing all that stuff, and I could walk out the same as when I walked in. Just avoid it. But that was not acceptable to me. That would be intolerable. That mean I'd be in the same pain and conflict I was when I came in. So man, I said, okay, I'm gonna bust through this. I'm gonna face it, I'm gonna do it. I really got no choice. I can't go back, right? I don't not wanna walk out of here the same as I walked in. So I did it. <laughs> I broke through <laughs> and faced those fears. And what happened was that I ended up dancing. <laughs> Like crazy, a crazy woman. I was, all of a sudden was doing doing dancing and taking all these dances, all these different types, tango and salsa and ballroom and free dancing and swing dancing and everything. I just had to dance like a maniac uh, because I I needed to get this out. I needed to express this what had been held back for so many years. And um, people, you know, it was like one of the. <laughs> most active or free dancers and people say, well, I can't dance like that, you know, and I and I, I thought, wow, I, I do not care what people think anymore <laughs> of my dancing or my work or my words, even if I look like a fool, even if I get on this Facebook Live and it comes out wrong, <laughs> even if I get up and dance and I look crazy or weird, I am being true to me and I'm having fun and suddenly I cared more about what I, my own happiness and what other people thought. So my priorities were reordered, right? And I like my priorities. I care more about, of course, about not intruding in other people, um, you know, and respecting other people and certainly caring what they think and their feedback and everything for relationships that I'm in, including with you guys. But I no longer made that greater than my own calling, my own relationship with life, with spirit, with my own inner guidance, with my own mission and purpose. That became greater now than how if I appear like a fool or not, what other people thought of me. And I like that. That is freedom. Welcome, Shania and everybody here. Thank you also for your likes and loves. I appreciate if you share with people that you think could use information about a breakthrough because I got some tips coming up how you can self-coach yourself through any block. So I'd uh, love if you share and if you do, you know, you can tag people, tag people in this, um, uh, the, in the comments that you think would like to benefit from this and the replay because th then they can hear the beginning and the end is coming up too with my tips. So um, thank you for sharing. And if anybody can relate to shyness, uh, would you type shy in the comments? If anyone is a network marketing pro, would you type pro in the comments? Because I want to congratulate you for being a professional. 
meaning that you take this seriously, you give it your best, and that it's it's more than just a hobby for you. That that you um, are you know are honest, ethical, and dependable, and you do what you say you're going to do in network marketing. That's what I consider professional. Of course, this is for everyone, not just network marketers. The tips I'm about to give. But okay, so what does a breakthrough look like? It looks like courage. It looks like being a warrior, and it looks like busting through, declaring war, war on fear. And I posted earlier on my Facebook page a picture of my friend Jeremy Buckles breaking bricks with his bare hands. He's a martial artist, and um, I saw his, his video when he did this, and they just crumble beneath his intent. And it isn't so much strength as it is intent and focus and direction and commitment to ourselves to break through. So that's what a breakthrough looks like, and it's scary as heck. But on the other side is freedom and joy and dancing in some way or other, um, being free to live your purpose and your dreams, to be yourself, to go out and serve people like you know that you want to, and be the leader you know you're meant to be, and live the kind of life you know you're meant to, to so that at the end of your life, you can look back and say, I did here. I did what I came here to do. I had a good, fulfilling life. I helped people. I, I uh, made a difference in the world and for people's lives, even if it's just a few. But it's cool if it's a lot, isn't it? So, um, yeah, I loved, I served, I gave, I helped, I contributed. And we need to, to do that, we need to let ourselves be free to do that and to care more about our mission and our why and our purpose and about other people's needs than our own fears and our, how we look and all that, that small stuff. Let the big stuff replace the small stuff. Don't sweat the small stuff. <laughs> Hello, Femi. Welcome. Thank you for the likes and loves, everybody. And if you're watching replay, I'd love if you typed in replay so I can thank you for that. So I help people to do this too to break through blocks. As, and one example is network marketers who are afraid of making their calls day after day after day and they put them off day after day, procrastination and all this. And so what we do when we work together is I help them find the reason behind this, this problem. And it might be a lack of confidence, a lack of skills or belief in themselves or like me fearing what other people thought or just believe that it's possible, or that they deserve it. So we locate, we find exactly what is the block that's behind that, and we solve that. Remember that every problem has solutions. I've helped a man who had an extreme fear of heights all his life. He couldn't go downtown among skyscrapers or go up in an elevator. Helped him to overcome his fear. This was in clear into middle age. All the top um, therapists in that big city were not able to help him overcome that. But within one session we got most of it, and a few more sessions he got all of it. And uh, he was so happy, he said, he wrote me and he said, I can now go up in buildings, and I can ride up in elevators, and I can go downtown, I can go downtown, I can go among skyscrapers and do my business un unhindered anymore. Helped another man who had self-destructive tendencies. Um, he kept drawing um, situations to himself, or you know other self-destructive tendencies that there could be too. Um, how we treat ourselves, helped him to, him to overcome that. I'm going to give you some tips right now. For um, And I'd love if you type in the comments any question that you have about this or about anything, even your network marketing business. I'd love if you type any comment that you have about um, feeling blocked, feeling stuck, feeling frustrated, like I was describing. Uh, any insight about this, if you've ever felt that way, any insight that you have about this topics that I might be able to share. So let's treat this like a discussion. I can share your comments if you if you type them, type them in. I'd love for you to be part of this. And welcome Jocelyn and Roy. I'm so glad you're here. We're talking about what a breakthrough looks like. And I won't go through mine. I, I just told my story, but what I'm going to do right now is share with you some tips where you can self-coach yourself. I noticed about 20 years ago, as a, I became a body-mind therapist, by the way, um, about 30 years ago, so I've been working with people ever since. And uh, what I noticed in working with myself and my clients and my students was a pattern, 
a similar pattern of how we got people unstuck, myself and the people that I worked with. And it seemed to be in four steps. So I call these now, I wrote them down and developed them. And I call this process real conversations with ourselves. So I'm going to describe this to you now. Real conversations is a process that I use to help people get unstuck and that you can use too to help yourself get unstuck. And it's these four simple steps. One, you observe the, proce you observe the problem or challenge that you're having. Where are you stuck? Does it look like, um, does it look like not making your calls? Does it look like avoiding? Does it look like procrastinating? Or does it even look like self-destructive behaviors such as addiction or um, anger? What does the problem look like? Number two, what is the emotion behind that? Some people like to skip this step and go right to the third step which is the need. But I think that identifying the emotion helps you to get a clue of what the real need is because usually the need is hidden. We have to be a little bit of a detective right here. A little bit of a Sherlock Holmes kind of digging for what the need is. The need is hidden because a lot of times when we're kids we're told we shouldn't have needs. Oh you're not angry. You don't need that. You're not hungry. Stop being you know, angry at your brother or whatever. Stop needing things. Hi Phil. Welcome. So glad to see you. Um, so the third step is the need. First Identify the problem. Second, the emotion that's underneath that, uh, which could be sad, glad, mad, <laughs> but usually it's a negative emotion under a problem. So usually it's um, um, fear, anger, sadness. So that's step two. Step three is you identify the need, and it could be a physical, emotional, mental, or spiritual need. And I put these together in a chart, and a little bit I'll, I'll post the link to where you can find this chart for free. I also, um, so, so I've written these all these down in a chart. You identify the need. And fourth, you solve that need. You meet that need. Then the problem goes away. For example, procrastination for network marketers. The emotion under it might be fear, guilt, embarrassment. And the need might be self-esteem to value oneself, to validate oneself. And the solution could be, here's one solution, that you could look in a mirror and say, I am valuable and lovable, no matter if people say yes or no. No matter what their response is, if they love me or hate me, my, my value, my esteem is untouched by that. That's not dependent on that, on what other people think. And when we really get that, then the procrastination goes away. And there's a joy in making the calls, and then you want to. So um, I cover more of that actually in my Real Conversations process. I'll put a link and that link gives you an audio, a 40 minute audio radio interview describing the Real Conversations process and giving examples of it so you can use this for yourself, self-coach. And it also contains that chart that I mentioned, which I, I use every day. And then it also contains five email lessons that will come to you showing you how to walk yourself and journal, you'll journal yourself through each of the four steps of real conversation with any problem that you face. So in my experience, you can get from problem to solution in minutes with any problem. And if you ever get stuck in this, that's when you can call me. And my phone number is on my website, the same site that I'll send you. But that's where I help people. Um, see what you can do yourself with this process. If you need help beyond that, then um, that's what you call me for. That's what I'm here for. That's what I love help, helping people do. So I will post that. And next Facebook Live, I would like to share with my baby boomer friends, but also all ages, a book that my friend Cash Matthews wrote called Money University. And I'm going to see if I can and get him on here with me next Facebook Live. If not, we'll see when, when, if, if, if and when we can. So it's, it's a book to be smart about money. How to take care of yourself in life this way, too. Because money does matter, doesn't it? A lot of things do. And your network marketing business, for those who are network marketers, it's the best business that I know to have a better life. And then he can show you how to manage that money. So we'll see you next Tuesday, every Tuesday, 2 p.m. Central Time. 
thank you each. Anybody have any last comments before I go? Before we sign off? Because I would like to hear from you as well. Any comments, questions? Did this touch you today? Did it relate? Did you relate to it? The being shy, the being blocked, the being stuck. Did you relate to it? If you did, I'd love to hear from you or even a private message if you want to on Facebook. Um, I'd love if you share this with people that you think that you know um, or tag people in the comments, people that you, that you think could um, use this, could benefit from this. And uh, love any comments, questions, your wisdom, your insight. A lot of pe times people do leave their comments here so I can share with others. Even if we end, go ahead and put your comments, of course, in there because people come and the discussion goes on, right? Okay, I'm going to end and I'm going to give you that link for my free, free Real Conversations course. Oh, thanks, Bill. Sending love to you, too. And everybody here, I love you guys. Let's all help each other in life and in this business of network marketing and um, support each other. Okay, and do good work. People need to know about you. People need a better life. Students who want to pay off loans. Moms who want to be home with their kids. People who want to escape a corporate grind. Seniors who want a better retirement. Baby boomers who, who need fulfillment, extra income, um, uh, a better retirement too. So um, love you guys. Let's do good work. See you next time. Bye-bye.